Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, dignitaries on the dais, uh, Mr. Uh, Shri Girish Chandra Murmu, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the Vag Bakri AMA Center for Governance presentation session on public sector audit and corporate governance. As all know, in today's world, how important corporate governance is for organizations. In line with this, today we have the privilege of hosting Shri Girish Chandra Murmu, the Comptroller and Auditor General of India for this session. A personality like him doesn't require an introduction, but let me try to tell you about him in brief. Shri Girish Chandra Murmu assumed office as the Comptroller and Auditor General of India on 8th August 2020. Prior to this, we are pr very proud that he was the first Lieutenant Governor of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Before moving to Jammu and Kashmir, capacities in government such as Secretary to the Department of Expenditure, Special and Additional Secretary in the Department of Financial Services and Department of Revenue, and Joint Secretary in the Department of Expenditure. Before his tenure at the center, Sri Murmu has served as on important assignments in the state government of Gujarat also. He was a postgraduate in political science, born in Orissa. I think you are a Gujarati by now. Uh, <laughs> I am told he loves to listen to Indian classical and Sufi music, does fo good photography, sketching and painting. And along with your routine gym, you never miss. I welcome Sri Grace Chandra Murmu on behalf of all of us and request him to share his valuable insights. Thank you. Thank you. Dignitaries on the dais, Mr. Desai, Mr. Joshi, all the esteemed members of the Ahmedabad Management Association, captains of industries and management, and ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege and I am very happy to be here to come back to this institution. So earlier I have come here for different uh, occasion for different purpose because a lot of training and other thing it happens and workshop happens in that context I have been here. It is always very happy to be with you and see how Gujarat is progressing with your, you know, all of your efforts. Everyone is, you know, doing something or other here. So when I was approached by Mr. Joshi, so I have been, you know, I was wondering what I would say here after coming here because you have Already in the this sector, in the management as well as in the private sector and all other works of life, you have been doing all other things very excellently. So in this context, what I would say here, I thought of coming here and I thought perhaps it will interest you something on the controller and auditor general of India and so the audit per se. And also the corporate governance on that, I thought I'll just say a few things. Certain thing, of course, I may not be able to touch because all these things are not in my domain and I am not uh, uh, very, very clear and uh, to be delved into that kind of a thing. But uh, with that, uh, I'll perhaps I'll give a little bit brief history and a little bit of our work and functions and you also all are aware, you are many of our chartered accountants and things. So the audit and other thing, you fully you are involved. 
so i'll just uh, say a few words about the our organizations that may interest you you may be knowing it because every year see, you see that ag audits and kind of a thing and uh, always the three c's are very very despised kind of a thing so always they say these the, the three c's like you know cvi and uh, 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 cag and uh, that kind of vigilance kind of a thing is uh, impediment to certain things but let me tell you it is uh, truth is somewhere in between it is not the truth because uh, cag does not come into that kind of a thing so it is and basically an accountability framework everywhere every organization there have to be some accountability framework particularly in a democratic setup when the country is celebrating already the amrit mahotsav and now we are getting into the amrit kal during the entire history pre post independence we have gone through different phases of economic development since 47 at various phases the turning point came in the 90 there after the acceleration took place in everything from the industries to business to every year where the private sector and the public sector played very important role but as you know in a democracy always in a representative government there is an agent principle relationship under this relationship including in your business whosoever is in on the helm of affairs of controlling the treasury or the finances has to be accountable so the wherever responsibility and authority is there accountability follows that has to be accounted particularly the representative uh, government because people cannot participate in, in the representative government so uh, they are executives have to be accountable through parliament or through the legislature that is the westminster system of you know governance or the democratic setup all over the mostly the countries but in india you will be very happy to know that uh, of course uh, very ancient days from the kautilya days the accountability framework is there ever since the accounting started in the mesopotamia or the sumerian from here where it has come this framework has come also greek civilization talked about the accountability how the city government should be accountable and uh, what kind of how the your account has to be maintained in the public how that time like blockchain you are saying that you know all the accounts should be distributed across the city wards so it should not be concentrated and the all the money to be dispersed to the public whatever the funds are and the account should be kept in different places it is like a distributed ledger so that is how it was done and then the recent history it is in the magna carta when king john acceded to that certain accountability to the parliament before that king ship was there entire europe it is different but in india since we are celebrating we have very old tradition of the democracy the village democracy janpad and all kind of thing there see but in india audit came up in 1858 the government of india at 1858 when the british queen took over the reins from the east india company so the accountant generals from three presidencies from calcutta madras and mumbai their accounts were consolidated and the controller and auditor general came up in 1860 so we are 161 years old so we just celebrated and we started our audit day to celebrate from the last two years we are doing it that is on 16th november uh, every year now we are celebrating and uh, that time some awareness etc also we, we are doing it but uh, it developed all the you know autonomy and accountability it came and independence it came uh, from time to time the government of india in 1919 1935 and the accounts and audit order of 1936 are crucial post independence after the enactment of the constitution of india that time this was you know debated in the for almost a few months and particularly dr b r ambedkar attached lot of importance to the audit he said that perhaps it is the much more important organization than the judiciary and he put it for and the controller and auditor general was created 
but constitution gave them we gave it to the independents completely it is independent of the legislature and the executive the the expenditure of the controller and auditor general is charged upon the consolidated fund of india it is not voted so it cannot be cut in the, the expenditure cannot be cut it has to be you know there and very interestingly mostly globally there are various system of you know audit one is you know board of audit there are a board majority 80 90% there is only the single uh, controller and auditor or, or the auditor general is there but there is board of audit and court of audit there are around two dozen countries where it is a court system so they have got judicial power also they can call for the records and summons also and they can adjudicate and they can give this kind of these are basically the originally from france italy and kind of that kind of countries but now it is almost in certain african countries like morocco and other also it is there so our system remain that another interesting feature is that many uh, countries in the world they have got you know federal st uh, structure and and also and for the union government there is a separate the federal government but india we have because spite of it is a federal government, features are there more centralized authority so the controller and auditor general is also been entrusted to the audit of the state government also so that is how we have an, a, a monocratic organization is in, in a federal structure it is a large vast power we have almost 130 plus offices we have parallel audit in uh, audit as well as the accounts and entitlement the pension and other thing you know so here you have in rajkot that office is there historically so uh, that is where it is there it is this kind of things are there and you will be surprised we are total strength staff strength is 41000 plus in spite of that we do the commercial audit that commercial audit we take the help of the chartered account every year we empanel the process of empaneling of the chartered accountants are there then they are assigned then this is how we are doing we are not able to even completely cover the boards statutory boards we have started those those kind of audit interestingly although we are known as controller and auditor general of india the controller function is not there what is the british treasury it used to be happening here the it has gone to some function with the treasury some control is the payment account system has come in the offices and this is how also there is a some kind of you know uh, emergence of certain thing it has happened which has been challenging to see how to do the audit so these are the few things which are happening this emergence of uh, thing although we have this kind of independence and formally the parliament enacted the dpc act that uh, duties powers and uh, conditions act in 1971 on that basis it is mostly it is a very small act and uh, regulation making of course we do it and that was also not done earlier so initially people are only thinking that papers of the governments in income and expenditure and little bit of financial attestation or assurance but and some compliance here and there as you know the audit is just you can describe in a few one two sentence it is only to see the legality propriety transparency and accountability but in these four words there are lot many things are there it is whether legal it is legal authority is there it is under law notification what is there in every organization it is there and propriety is basically a delegation of power who is propriety is it is whether the correct person is you know exercising that power a transparency you understand and the accountability is there but it has now added on to the economy efficiency and effectiveness so we do the performance audit or the value for money audit now this is a very maybe on two decades or kind of a thing which is very gaining the, uh, the currency and that is the main thing now we have been doing this kind of a thing so in that course of uh, things we have gained certain insight into the different aspects of it. 
and to our global connect how we are exposed to the global activities i will tell you that we have three offices in abroad one in washington and one in london one in kuala lumpur and still we are trying to have one more because africa we are uh, uh, covering from delhi only because all the embassies all the pscs if they are working anywhere in the world so we are supposed to audit them so that's why we have an, uh, some setup in these countries plus we are member of the global community it is a parallelly there is an international organization of supreme audit institution it's 195 countries are member it is parallel like a general assembly and it has a, got you know every alternate or every two year there is a congress that happens and uh, also there are regional organizations seven regional organizations like the asian european european latin american african caribbean this kind of a thing so we are regional also at the same time parallelly we also are member of the all this uh, uh, organization regional organization like g20 brics shanghai cooperation organization all these things so we have been for after this pandemic perhaps first time we are hosting everything from the shanghai cooperation organization also we did it we did it brics also we did recently in the g20 in the that is supreme audit institutions we said the sai 20 also there are very very important engagements in that parallelly this is another uh, assignments we have been doing also in the global forum because international standard of audit and accounts there are uh, apex bodies they are also mm -hmm. we represent we are from the inception we have been a chair of the knowledge sharing and knowledge service uh, committee there are four, four five committees there for the standard setting and professional pronouncement and this kind of uh, standards are there we are all people are there and other organizations are also there and uh, we have been chairing we have been chairing the un panel of uh, audits all the un organizations are audited 15 16 countries they do fortunately we are doing the large number you know it we have this is again we compete elections are there recently we won the who but before that iaas opcw fao interparliamentary union all these things we have been doing and now we are continuing to do also we have been elected as the chairman of the asian organization from next year onwards we will be hosting certain things even commonwealth i forgot commonwealth also that is also uh, we had hosted earlier again i think perhaps we will be hosting again this kind of a thing so these are the few things so in international standards and also we are globally very known for the training ita training information technology audit then we have got an icsa where the globally almost 30 35 countries participants we are training them and uh, over the period of time more than 6000 participants we have trained them and also one on environmental audit we have at jaipur as i said in that also we are pioneer now looking to this kind of things we are our engagement globally has increased and lot of uh, value additions are happening lot of bilateral treaties we have done recently almost uh, we are around 20 21 countries we have done and uh, more are coming more countries are asking for their our help that is some kind of, uh, our people talk the second meant kind of an arrangement where we send our officers on deputation for some time we have we have a very long presence in Oman. Now we are training some officers from Maldives. Now New Zealand, again, we have thought of, they have asked us recently to send there, to set their systems. So we are doing this kind of job also. So our uh, officers are highly trained. They come from, through the same UPSC service. And mostly now all are technically qualified. 80% are engineers or 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 management professionals and that kind of qualifications are there so it is very easy to spearhead all these kind of things but in the cutting edge also we are trying to upgrade ourselves but there are various challenges these challenges are i just i'll read out nothing else basically the local self-government 
after the 73rd 74th constitutional amendment now third tier government has come initially it is the federal structure now it is third tier government has also come and successively finance commissions now directly giving grant to them so fourth uh, 14th finance commission now 15th finance commission, they are certain performance related fronts are there without mm -hmm. audit it is very difficult in 2002 the accounting standard was prescribed in consultation with the cag and it was for the urban local bodies it was given but as you know urban local bodies except the corporations when municipalities don't have that kind of structure accounting strength their cfo kind of things are not there so how they will manage and they have been prescribed double entry bookkeeping although the government is the cash based accounting but these people have been in this kind of a thing and we have 2.5 lakh panchayats they are also after some relaxation in 2009 the accounting standards have been now notified and it has been adopted of course it is cash based accounting but they don't have anything except talati nobody is there even talris are not there patwaris are not there many states so they don't get even the fund their basic condition is they have to maintain account they are to be an elected body and they have to be some revenue raising capacity so if they don't have that kind of a thing so they would not get the basic grant after utilization certificate accounts if they don't finalize then they don't get, uh, get the even further installment uh, the forget about the performance uh, grant which is almost 10% of the entire grant they are supposed to get and 20% in the r1 and this is in in the 5 lakh crore in 5 year they get if you imagine 30% normally they will not get few will get this is what is happening so local uh, uh, governments uh, body governments are having a problem so we are thinking because this is a domain of the state government the department of local uh, uh, fund examiners that is but they have not been strengthened so how to handle them we are giving them technical guidance and we have also started now the party we are trying in a big way to do that so that we can help them without you know getting into their and their you know domain so but it's a very delicate balance but lot of money is going apart from that lot of government schemes are coming there similarly years back in 80s the district rural development agencies came so became they became a society about the societies again audit is again a different uh, domain again the challenges come you know when the infrastructure now in the gati shakti you see almost 14 departments are there and most of them have an ppp kind of thing and hybrid annuity and boots and other kind of a thing so how to do that this is another challenge this is even the chartered accountant will have a problem to how to challenge because even certain schemes are now through implemented through the societies and parastatals and they are, they escape this accountability framework so this is the real challenge it is for everybody the social audits are there social audits have been now you know mandated in certain thing but as you know that social audit again has not crystallized properly in the on the ground in, in spite of gram sabhas and all kind of things under the pesa act and all where the there should be a local participation but it has not happened plus the emerging technology emerging business model e-commerce and all including gst and other taxation authorities they are having a problem so in that audit again the digital currency like crypto that's that's have come up it is including the private sector will have a problem how to capture these long distance transactions which is in the sphere of you know uh, internet in the cloud how to do that these are the basic major kind of a thing very fortunately we have adopted technology since that we have now digitized everything in our uh, audit from the first april this year it will be on the digital space the paperless audit we have on this infrastructure we have created we have our data analytics we are also using now in limited way machine learning and artificial intelligence artificial intelligence itself has a challenge recently we have g20 in the site 20 we have been deliberating even the seo 
on the responsible you know usage of ai which is another big challenge along with blue economy the blue economy also a challenge as you know the blue economy is you know very big economy it is almost uh, it, it 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 is you know in the g20 countries they cover almost the 85 percent of you know uh, the trade 75 percent of gdp in these countries and uh, around 3 million people access the oceans for their livelihood and uh, almost 80 percent of uh, sea trade are on the you know through oceans only apart from other things so this is again we audit in the coastal regulation zone rivers and irrigation but all disjointed mineral resources the sustainable development goals now it is the midterm review will be coming where the milestone is 2025 20, and ultimately 30 then all this conference of parties on biodiversity on climate change and their milestones Again, we are supposed to also audit the sustainable development goals, how the governments are prepared, how much they have achieved. So globally, a lot many issues are there. So you can see our challenges are there, including the private sector, how to account for these things. In this context, now I'll, I think a lot of audit I talked about, I should now talk about the little bit corporate governance, but nothing very new. The corporate governance is as usual, it is whether in the public sector or the private sector, it is the same. See, they are the all things are there. Maybe somewhere it is the profit is the bottom line, other where the economic return may be the thing or the social with the statutory co co the commitment kind of a thing. But more, mostly the management structures and the uh, overarching acts are companies act, regulation by the corporate affairs in the government. Our challenges have become when this uh, company become Navaratna, Mini Ratna, Maharatna. So the different kind of things and they have a global uh, exposure like uh, ONGC Videsh, NTPC somewhere else. So this kind of thing once happens, then again, another challenge it is coming. As usual, we have a different challenge. Most during the 80s and 90s, the mushroom growth of public sector enterprise came up. Most of them are sick. They have eroded totally network. They have become dead bodies. And most of the governments are, you know, just carrying these dead bodies. And we have been auditing them. Lot of investment is there. There is no return. Only few are making certain profit and it is a burden on the exchequer. And we are trying in our annual audit to tell them these are the audit earlier. Either you, you know, close them or revive them. Unnecessarily carrying is a difficult thing because it is unsustainable. When a railways recently we had a seminar, they have almost 46 border corporations. One only one, and you think of we have more than thousand uh, state le level and the union level board and corporations. And we are every year we are supposed to audit. So we have devised certain kind of a thing, and same thing years together, people have not even finalized their accounts. Five years, ten years, and this is the major problem. You may not be seeing in the private sector this kind of a thing. At least some accounts are being finalized. Something has been happening, but in the public sector, this is what is happening. But it varies from region to region, state to state. But this is this is the thing. Another thing we see in the financial audit is the sustainability. It is a lot of uh, talk happened. You know how sustainability post COVID because the fiscal deficit and revenue deficit. It is widening. It is almost uh, too much. You know, which was in the 14th Financial Commission said that the fiscal deficit should not be more than 60% combined with the state and the union government. Now we have almost reached 90%. Okay, in the emerging economy, there is the sustainability issues come. So we, since we are auditing and we are also interested with the FRBM Act, so we give our comments on that. And we have been seeing certain states, they have become almost unsustainable. This is only the fiscal deficit. That the way they give the guarantees, and I don't want to delve into that, the freebies. The freebies, the event it is happening, we don't call freebies because what is freebies not defined. Only think how it is sustainable. 
what is sustainability so sustainability part also we are grappling on that there are hidden subsidies there are subsidies you can see there you can see so many things but there is an hidden subsidy there is an implied subsidy so capture those things that get the real sustainability is a real is a big big task we have a very good audit advisory board we have very eminent people in our board so we discuss certain subject we have economist like you know our dhodakia and our earlier ca like mr desai we have devi sethi we have arup raja we have uh, that ashok gulati agriculture economist and this kind of people in our boards so and a few uh, ex bureaucrats also in the administration we are trying to frame certain things but it is really a very gigantic kind of a thing so in the corporate level apart from the disclosure norm board constitutions and uh, uh, audits you know uh, kind of you know uh, audit committees formation women uh, members all these are prevalent because i feel few things are very crucial for the uh, companies or the government or whatever at least you should have internal mechanism for control internal audit is including or the concurrent audit is very very crucial in every organization then you will avoid certain thing but although the companies act mandate that certain uh, turnover or certain kind of a company should have purpose they should have an internal auditor system but mostly we see in the government it is absent i don't know you the private company must be having every year that is not there that is one thing second thing is composition of the audit committee that is the basic thing which is sometimes absent in the uh, particularly the state psus so this is a real challenge for us accounts are not available there is no audit committee no internal control then years together then this is how we see so i thought of uh, this kind of uh, things sir are very crucial in the corporate governance but corporate governance as you from the management uh, this organization i feel it is only the professional ethics and uh, how your framework is there the individual ethics and professional ethics nothing can you know be you know above that without that all framework accountability framework does not work whatever we have so much of rules regulations we have got corporate affairs now nafra and all kind of thing but in spite of all these thing unless there is a sound system in an organization and it is totally followed it is according to me it is very difficult earlier when i was in gujarat i was heading certain companies as a cmd md and all kind of thing i have seen uh, for a long i was associated with the corporate governance i remained cmd and md of the giic then uh, gujarat chemical port terminal ceo of uh, gujarat maritime board and also gsfc and all and with some private sector also and the venture capital also gujarat venture finance limited that also i remain chair so i have seen that kind of thing the uses the business uh, what challenges are there uh, that is the thing in the private sector that's why perhaps like us have to be now wary of this thing how your internal control system has to be strengthened how business ethics have to be brought in how commitment has to be brought in plus the emerging technology and challenges in the global connect how you are going to do it the emerging technology will be a difficult uh, to see it changes every day almost every new things are emerging that uh, you cannot uh, upgrade your infrastructure and capability overnight but the problems come overnight so how are you going to have this kind of thing because of the disclosure public uh, particularly those who are listed companies unless it is disclosure to the stakeholder is correct then market manipulation you know it can happen the sensex can go heavier and anything can happen you saw many recent examples are there how in the globally it is happening in the american bank and the swiss bank and including in india because of these kind of prudence like ilfs and kind of thing i have seen how ilfs came down but i was i was indirectly directly there in the financial sector that's why i have seen what happened how it happened 
what kind of structures they have what kind of they have jugglery you know the that uh, creative accounting that is uh, not enough more than that they have been doing so different kind of things were, were there so this is the real challenges in the corporate governance but uh, having said, to upgrade with the emergent technology and the ever business models and also international regulations and the barriers in the post uh, this uh, ukraine you can see different things are emerging and in this situation it is very delicate situation and globally do you see some kind of and slowing up in economy is there we are fortunate that we could manage it and we have now in a silver lining in this entire dark cloud so we have been a good one of the fastest growing economy but we have to catch up lot of thing so many things we are very comfortable in the foreign exchange uh, reserve our inflation is under control but we will have to watch over that because seasonal things influence the your cpi index is influenced by so many thing even global market that imported inflation can come so many thing can happen in this context as an responsible citizen in the private because without private sector participation we cannot have this sustained gdp is the government has done tremendously good they have increased the capital expenditure year on year lot of things are in the infrastructure and they have lot of uh, innovation they have done like the lot of dvts you see particularly this uh, jam trinity is uh, wonderful the upi has you know is an is an wonder for the global community how these things are happening billions of transaction and trillions of rupees are happening these are the success stories but we'll have to watch over that that is the thing how they are functioning how technologies are functioning the private sector also have to come up and uh, i think real interest rate are still there uh, positive we have a certain leverage there and uh, without uh, investment we cannot sustain and the government investment howsoever will increase will have in some catalytic role but private sector has to come so the distinguished guest and the the your audience who you are associated i think this is the thing this is sabke sath is sabka prayas is required this without prayas it is very difficult now it is main thing is that so i don't want to give you so much of thing from monologue from here because you all understand the management business very well in the gujarat this soil it is the ecosystem so i don't want to see the corporate governance or other kind of a thing neither on the audit since i was <laughs> to come here and i thought of give you some kind of an so i will be you know very interested in the interacting with you with these words i thank you very much for calling me thank you very much can we have some questions yeah i thought of a small capsule i can please hello uh, contrary to the general impression of government service or officers i have a high regard regarding bureaucracy officers i have a high regard regarding bureaucracy and uh, we see that uh, uh, foreign uh, affairs or commerce industry or railway and there are many ministries and they are working at uh, day and night and doing good things so in this region uh, and you are the close uh, <laughs> officer of the uh, today's uh, government so uh the uh, good and positive things you uh, mind or are you uh, observe at uh, in your tenure thank you very much for the very interesting questions you know my tell us okay
but you know now i used to be in the government but now in a in a safe distance i am the elbow length i am there because i am supposed to be the auditor because i am the watchdog so now i watch over the government and functioning every year but nevertheless definitely there is a very paradigm shift is there towards development towards growth towards our global connects and like the infrastructure in this difficult time also the way we handle the pandemic the way we handle the, these other issues this is tremendous and this is all because of the visionary leadership and very decisive decisive government that is you required because again one thing i forgot all governments and all companies are in india they are suffering from the one thing is that is an cost overrun and time overrun most of the government infrastructure are in the cost overrun and time overrun this is humongous that has been cut to great extent so you can see on the graphs the development taking place otherwise it is you know years together we have seen which was earlier plan like in the health infrastructure pan india we are doing the status check of how the health infrastructure and the emergency uh, response is there we have almost completed this thing we are uh, you know state wise we are doing it we will compile in this thing we, you see lot many uh, medical college and ams like institutions were conceived in long back it took years together to implement and after implement of the infrastructure came even it is not fully functional and in the what is the norm against the norm we don't manufacture norm we go by the government norm or the policies against that when we examine it is far away like the number of psc chc or and other thing you know healthcare you want it is except few states many states they are in a half or less than that also so in this kind of in the normal time you have an infrastructure the abnormal time how you will do better performance this is directly proportional to your efficiencies it cannot have a wonders in a certain thing but because of our resilience the kind of people here the family and other things are there our institutions in this pandemic we have to go we become resilient uh, this is good thing only one thing that i say that it is decisive it, it is very very focused and this is the golden time if we miss this thing perhaps according to me we'll miss it because whatever we have been lagging behind we can do now now it is unsuper to come out there are certain issues in the business i know it but i'll not discuss it but <laughs> but uh, uh, we government's efforts if we all do it we can overcome and we are here as an auditor to point out we are almost like an concurrent audit because big projects are for the years by so every alternate year here we are taking up and we are able to show what is the where they are lagging behind and how, where the things can be uh, fixed how funds can be because in the resources are as you know they are very limited if if you do a cost over in 200 time so you are depriving other you know, projects the opportunity cost is gone so you are simply you know spreading this thing in the same project same thing you are spending much more than that which otherwise you, you are spending much more than that which otherwise you could have spent for some other thing and you could have created certain infrastructure that is the my main concern in the corporate governance is that even the government scheme also and all other things are there so perhaps it is good thing it is happening and we expect that and i think governments are very responsible i have all other things are there so perhaps it is good thing it is happening and we expect that and i think governments are very responsible uh, changed after i because it's like you know we are uh, changed after i because it's like you know we are like an investigator now i have become an you know facilitator we are doing the catalyst role we have now brought in i have now uh, you know told our state level the ags and pa uh, principal ags to have close coordination with the government and even the entry and exit conference you can have with the chief minister and the concerned ministers because minister would not know what is happening in their department
minister and that's concerned ministers because minister would not know what is happening in their department now we have started to approach the and they are very happily responding and the chief minister also are giving us time and our people are giving you know long hours to you know discuss certain things and they are very very you know happy in that even in the union government the ministers have been told that you should pay heed to the audits so the, the compliance has increased <laughs> thank you very much as you said uh, you surely might be advising uh, uh, from the senior or at the central level but uh, on this august 12 platform of fraternity as a management uh, organization have you uh, any points for even government of gujarat and the corporates which are here in audience to give away thank you organization have you uh, any points for even government of gujarat and the corporates which are here in audience to give away thank you i only can say few thing only two thing only because it is whether private sector or the government sector the thing is that we will have to have we will have to increase our we will have to increase our efficiency and effectiveness transparency and effectiveness transparency and accountability you all know it that is there because with government sector unless we focus on that and we will be again falling into same trap of the time over and uh, over run and, and uh, squandering away the limited resources and we will have to do the sustainability now sustainability is the big issue thank you may i ask you Sector units. Yes. Uh, old public sector units, you know, which, you know, legacy issues or something, they are yes. huge losses. And we have examples like Air India, though that is a different thing, the privatization. But again, so much of assets are locked up and all. Now, as you're playing a role of a catalyst, what is your take or recommendations to, you know, make this unproductive assets productive for the national exchequer? Basically, privatization or the disinvestment, it was started with this government. Niti Aayog came out with around 126 union governments PSCs to be divested, disinvested. But the process was like that so many practical issues are there. So it was becoming a very difficult, but nevertheless now it has become a, you know, what the prime minister said that governments should be not, not in a business. They, they are not in the business. They have no business to be in business. So that is the motto. Earlier it was being divested to have a non-tax revenue. It was like that. The uh, entire concept was to have some kind of you know, fund because the tax revenues are you know, to supplement. You have to divest certain things. But this kind of paradigm shift has come. And that's why we are trying to tell the state governments, union government is aware, the state government that you should also do this, uh, you know, uh, what is called uh, uh, your reality check and kind of a thing, what you want to do and what you are desire burden. They have outlived their, you know, uh, utility, their objective and purposes. So they are no longer required. Maybe in 80s or 60s, they were required. When the private sector had not come in a big way, they may be required. Now, after post-liberalization 90s, certain things are not required. Statutory corporation, I understand. You have a bus service, a road transport, or the electricity here and there. The electricity is also unbundling is required. Okay. But uh, there are certain things you can uh, think that, okay, this is uh, in a, in a public service. You will have to do it in a subsidized basis. But in the commercial organization, into, into the electronics, manufacturing, everywhere you are there. So why, why it is required? According to me, perhaps they have and definitely when the net worth has gone and it has become you have an asset, government has already created for the asset monetization. They have already thought of some uh, big uh, target is there. And uh, but uh, certain you know practical issues are there. So perhaps uh, I can uh, say a few things because I know that thing. Because most of this board corporation, whatever their assets are there, even they don't know. They have not been in their property card and certain things like in the telecom sector and other things. They have no that this is our property. They don't know. It is encroached. They have never tried because this I had done in GIC. We had given low 
documented everything, but it has not been you know, recorded in Satvara or the property. First, I, I did this uh, massive drive on that. Then I started this Patani recovery. <laughs> After that, I then we look at this thing. This is what has happened. Practically, I had done this thing. So I have seen Air India when they divested, I was there in the expenditure secretary. So whatever uh, fund we had to give, because I have been there. Similarly, the restructuring of the uh, MTNL, BSNL, that is also, I was a part of that. So I know even this Uday scheme, when it came, initially, it was, you know, handled by me. I I, I, I have a privy to certain things. I hope that it will, it will, you know, bring result in that. Hello, sir. Sir, my question is, uh, the past uh, uh, government, we see uh, Mr. Vinodra has presented many reports uh, and uh, beyond baseline. So uh, we haven't seen any reports like this during uh, uh, this tenure. So is there any possibility that, uh, or is there any uh, pressurized uh, system there? What is your opinion, sir? See, these are once in a while. It is not uh, Vinodra alone. Earlier also, you see long back, uh, the buffers also came. These are very naturally it has come up because the audit process will bring out certain things. It is how being used by the different uh, stakeholders, that is the thing. Whatever the audit brings, as we say that, uh, with evidence, we cannot in, a, uh, uh, in the audit, cannot uh, manufacture anything out in the out of blue. So it has to be because all your policies are yours because we don't uh, examine through any other policies, policy or whatever your things are. Is the government or the whichever the organization institutions against that we examine again with your records and your activities we don't create any record again so only we see wherever it is the absence is there which is the globally accepted standard otherwise we don't do against that we bring out now how being you know sensationalized or not that is a different thing <laughs> so this is we don't get, but now also we do because wherever these things were there, we because we are supposed to bring it out. It is to the policymakers, public, and the executive to mend it or the fix it. Many times it is the uh, we, contrary to the, our opinion at the highest level. Sometimes people have not they may not have this kind of the correct information. What is happening? So in this kind of a thing, in audit kind of thing, they get this to know what is where to fix it. So that is how we are getting good result now, good response from the policy makers. That is good thing. And I, we have also tried to uh, reorient ourselves, our uh, people, our productivity and kind of thing. We are trying to reorient ourselves, looking as a very, very rigid to becoming a more complementary we are trying to do that because ultimately all the audit according to me is for the good governance effective governance so we have to play that kind of role rather than obstructionist or kind of a thing you know that is so many other agencies are there where our major things are there so they will see it is not our job thank you any other question I want to have a very uh, respectful applaud for sir that we are seeing the Gujarati office on the step forward and from the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Then I'd like to ask one question. Please. One last question. Please, last question. I think I have been here in Gujarat also. I have been handling all the challenging things. So, wherever challenge is there, perhaps I have been going there. This is how. You know, willy-nilly, you know, where I'm landing, I don't know, but I'm going, 
and I never felt it very awkward there. Yeah. Every year, head on, I did whatever I can understand. Whatever assignment I the head on, I just test uh, it. That that is there. I I I was aware from Gujarat itself that what is three seventy, what was happening. But uh, certain thing, I thought it is too much. So it is going on for so many years. Some solution has to come. So perhaps I got some opportunity to do little bit there. So that is there. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ahmedabad Management Association, I would like to express our deep sense of gratitude to Sri Gurishandra Bhamosa. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for delivering thought-provoking talk on public sector audit and corporate governance. Sir, it is indeed quite interesting to know various aspects related to the subject matter. The AMA has been at the uh, forefront of promoting knowledge sharing and professional development. Today's event stands as a testament to its dedication in providing platform for learning who has made significant contribution to the field of public administration. Uh, to all, I mean, we have feedback form placed on your uh, chair. I would request you to kindly fill in that feedback and see our professional endeavors and work towards a more transparent, transparent and accountable for a prosperous future. Thank you all for coming here to Ahmedabad. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know, I know, because I have come in certain thing, you know, that time.